Hello, today we are investigating transport in plants and we've been looking at two main experiments in general and seeing what they tell us about mass flow. Here we've got the trunk of a tree and uh, what we can do is we can carry out a ringing experiment where we chop the outer layer off and reveal the inner, inner layer inside a tree. So we've removed the bark around the outside and we've also removed the phloem. If you had a look down a tree, then you'd see a protective layer, and then the phloem, and then the xylem. So the xylem is quite a big section, the phloem is a little section, so we've taken off the protective layer, and then the phloem. And so this is, uh, this is called a ringing experiment, because we've taken a ring off of a tree. Now if we did a ringing experiment, what we actually end up seeing is that, after a bit of time, after we've left it, uh, the top bit of the ring dwells a bit beyond what it would be uh, normally but the bottom bit below where we cut off and remove the flow um, stays the same and if we actually took a sample of what's going on in here then we find that there is this sugary sap uh, that's built up and that shows that um, there's some sugar that's being transported in the flow. Another thing that happens in a ring experiment is that tissues below the ring will often die. And so they'll wither and they'll die because they haven't got the sucrose that is coming through the phloem. So that is another good bit of evidence that the phloem is essential in carrying sugars to all parts of the plant. Now another experiment that we can do is using radioactive isotopes. And one radioactive isotope that we can use really easily is carbon. So normally uh, carbon has an atomic mass of 12, but if we add an extra neutron, we can make it carbon 13, which is radioactive. We can then uh, make this carbon 13 into carbon dioxide that itself is radioactive because of the carbon, and then we can put this carbon dioxide around a plant. So if this tree is, for example, surrounded by uh, a carbon dioxide rich atmosphere that is actually radioactive carbon then it will continue to take in the carbon dioxide and, and it will continue to photosynthesize and use this carbon dioxide to make glucose but then because it's used radioactive carbon this glucose will be radioactive too. We can then trace where this glucose ends up in the tree and so we can see that actually this radioactive glucose ends up going down the tree uh, in the phloem. That's called autoradiography because we're using the, the radioactivity produced by the radioactive glucose to see where the glucose is in the plant on an x-ray film. Normal x-rays that you might have at the hospital, that's not autoradiography because they're firing x-rays at you and seeing which ones get absorbed and which ones don't. This one, the radioactivity is being produced by the plant itself, hence why it's auto self radiography. So those are the two main things that um, help us realise that translocation happens in the phloem. Um, another smaller thing is that an aphid, a small little insect that lives in plants, its little mouth goes into the phloem to get its bit of sugar, and that, that could be seen as evidence that uh, the sucrose is transported in the phloem as well. The other thing, you might remember that we talked about when the xylem vessel is cut, that an air bubble moves in, that water doesn't leak out, and that was evidence that it's under tension, negative pressure. Well here, we know that when you cut into the phloem, sugary sap does leave, and that's how we get maple syrup from a maple plant anyway. Okay, that's it for today. See you next time.